around Dodge City and in the territory on West, there's just one way to handle the killers and the spoilers, and that's with a U.S. Marshal and the smell of gun smoke. Gunsmoke, starring William Conrad. The story of the violence that moved west with young America. And the story of a man who moved with it. I'm that man. Matt Dillon, the United States Marshal. The first man they look for and the last they want to meet. It's a chancy job, and it makes a man watchful. And a little lonely. <laughs> Thank you, Doc. Uh, sit down. I'll be right in. Thank you. Uh... Uh, coffee. Uh... How are you, Doc? Uh, how's the coffee? Fine, fine. Pour yourself a cup. Well, gee, thank you. <laughs> what were you doing out there, Matt? Watering the prisoners? I haven't got any prisoners now, Doc. Oh, then you're falling down on the job. Offhand, I can think of a dozen men around Dodge that ought to be in jail. Yeah, well, you give me a list. I'm going to need somebody to bring to trial <laughs> next week. <clears throat> you are? Well, what do you mean? Well, there's a new circuit court judge coming. He's going to be disappointed if there's nothing for him to do. A new judge? What happened to Judge Brookie? Oh, he just needed help, I guess. After all, he has to cover about the whole of western Kansas. Well, who is this new man, What's his name? Out of the name of Stokes. Judge Stokes. Man, that's all I know about him. Stokes. I hope he's a good one. I've seen some remarkably unlearned judges in my time. <laughs> that is not an easy job, Doc. And out here it doesn't pay enough to make it worthwhile to most men. You know, Judge Brooking could probably do twice as well back east. And so could I, man. I know, Doc. But then you wouldn't have anything to complain about. And if you didn't have anything to complain about, you'd just shrivel up and die. Well, at least I wouldn't go to the pauper's grave I'm headed for now. <laughs> uh, say, Doc, um, how about loaning me $100? $100? Oh. Good morning, Homer. Yes, sir. Mr. Holmes, Mr. Dillon. Chester. Oh, uh, Chester. Uh, who's this you got? Well, this is Homer Tisdale, Mr. Dillon. There's a complaint against him. Oh, a complaint? Yes, sir. You know Van Walcott who took over that little store next to the stage office? Yeah, I know him. Well, sir, he's coming over here in a few minutes. He claims Homer was trying to rob him. Oh. I figured it'd be best to settle a thing right here, Hugh. Now, yeah. uh, were you trying to rob him, Homer? Yes, sir. I see. With a gun or what? No, sir. No, I ain't got no gun. You were trying to steal something out of his store, then, is that it? Yes, sir. Where are you from, Homer? I haven't seen you in Dodge before. No, sir. I've been homesteading Saline River. But I got starved out. I had to quit. I didn't have no luck at all. Yeah. Well, you sure don't look as though you'd been eating very regular. No, sir, I ain't. Well, you got him here. Well, of course I got him here, Walkett. Dirty little thief. Marshal, I want to sign a complaint against this man. Mr. Walkett, you've been in Dodge about a month now, haven't you? What's that got to do with it? Well, back east, I guess they're a little more formal in the way they handle things. Now, why don't you just tell me what happened, huh? Well, I was next door at the stage office talking to Jay Buford... Uh, we heard a crash over in my store or something falling. So we run out, and there he was. We caught him red-handed, Marshal. Caught him doing what? Stealing, that's what. Now, you haven't told me what he stole. He had a whole handful of potatoes, Marshal. Man's a thief. He belongs in jail. A whole handful of potatoes. Is that true, Homer? 
Is that what happened? Yes, sir, Marshal. <clears throat> yes, sir, it's true. I was hungry, and I seen the potatoes. I, I thought he wouldn't miss a couple. I could pay him back later. Man who steals belongs in jail. Look, Walcott, he shouldn't have done it. I admit that, but... Uh... Then throw him in jail. And I can't do that. Why? Well, for one thing, Chester and I have to ride up to Fort Larned for a few days, and there wouldn't be anybody here to watch him and feed him. Leave him some water. That's all he needs. Chester. Yes, sir. You take Homer over to the Long Branch. Maybe Sam Noonan can put him to work sweeping out or washing glasses or something, huh? Now, look here, Marshal. You ain't going to make a fool of me. Get going, Chester. Marshal, I'm telling you... Mr. Walcott, why don't you get back to your store? Maybe somebody's found a few pennies and wants to buy that handful of potatoes. Doc was right. There probably were a dozen men around Dodge that should have been in jail. But if the law was going to start locking up men like Homer Tisdale, I figured they wouldn't need me to handle the job. At least that's what I thought on the way to Fort Larned. It was four days later when we got back, and I found out different. We were riding up Front Street past the stage office when Jay Buford, the stage company manager, and Van Walcott spotted us and started yelling. I had Chester take my horse while I got down and went over to see what they wanted. Ah. You come back just in time, Marshal. Done what I said, it wouldn't have happened. I was just telling Walcott, if you didn't get back today, we'd have to do something ourselves. What's the trouble, Buford? Murder. Murder and robbery, Marshal. Right there in the stage office. Charlie Reynolds is dead and $10,000 is gone. Happened this morning. Hold up. It's about 8 o'clock, Marshal. And I'd just opened up my store and gone into the stage office to say good morning to Jay. He was standing there talking to Charlie Reynolds, and, well, I no sooner got inside than the voice out back yelled at us to throw up her hand. And we did, too. And then this gunman come forward wearing a mask. He knew right where the money was, too. I had it in the treasure box waiting for the stage to go north, Marshal. And this gunman opened it up. It was all bills. And he scooped them out into his pocket. And then he stood there, Marshal, and, and he told us not to try to follow him. And then before we could even move, he pulled the trigger on poor old Charlie Reynolds and killed him. Just like that. No reason at all. You didn't follow him. He got away. Well, now, who's going to follow a killer like that? We ain't crazy. Any idea who it was? You bet we do. Who? That mask. That didn't hide nothing. Well, who was it? Homer Tisdale. What? Just as plain as day, even if he hadn't spoke. Homer ain't so meek as he looks, Marshal. He's a killer, that's what he is. All that other's just pretending. You should have put him in jail first off. Any idea where he is? He must be halfway to Texas by now. But you better find him, Marshal. Yeah. Yeah. That Homer's a mighty cool one if he is still in Dodge, Mr. Jones. Maybe he hasn't heard about it yet, Chester. You don't think he did, do you? Well, we'll ask him if he's in here. There he is, sweeping out back them tables. Yeah. Oh, oh, oh Marshal, Chester. Oh, Homer. The fellow's looking for a drink. It ain't ten o'clock yet. Homer. Hmm? How long have you been here? Oh, come into work about... Oh, about 8.30, Marshal. Why? Where were you before that? Out back. Sam leaves me asleep in that shed he's got out there. Oh, but can you prove that you were out there at 8 o'clock this morning? Prove it? Did anybody see you? Well, no. no. Nobody ever come out there. Why, Marshal? Well, the stage office was robbed this morning. And a man was shot and killed. No. Jay Buford and Van Walcott witnessed it. They say you did it. Me? They're willing to swear to it. Well, I... I, I, I didn't rob her. I, I didn't kill nobody. 
I wouldn't do nothing like that, Marshal. You don't believe them, do you? It doesn't matter what I believe, Homer. There are two witnesses. You haven't even got an alibi. Well, I was right out back there, Marshal. I was eating a little bread and some bacon. That I well, you promised me something, Homer. Well, sure, Marshal. What? You promised me that you won't leave Dodge. I'm in bad trouble, ain't I? Yeah. Well, I won't run. I promise. <laughs> Three days later, Judge Stokes' circuit brought him to Dodge. I went over and talked to him about Homer Tisdale. And it was like talking into a rain barrel, or rather a whiskey barrel. The judge seemed to have more interest in corn liquor than in the law. And all I could get out of him was that a jury would have to decide the case. So the following Monday morning, court was opened in an old dance hall across the railroad tracks. A jury was sworn in, and Judge Stokes took over. First, he put Van Walkett on the stand, and then Jay Buford. Chester and I sat with Homer and watched. Marshal, something, Marshal, something I don't understand. What, Homer? Well, uh, that judge, he'd been talking to Walcott about me. Now he's going to talk to Buford. Is he going to ask me anything? Well, sure, Homer, he'll put you on the stand, but you'll have your lawyer to help you. My what? what? That man's sitting right over there. Oh, huh? He's the yeah. lawyer that the judge appointed to defend you. Oh. Well, how, how can he help me? He can talk to me. He won't know what to say. Oh, he will talk to you. Mm -hmm. huh? I guess there's no hurry. Mr. Young, I never seen that Why? lawyer before. Why? Did you? No, he's a stranger to me, Chester, but Judge Stokes oh. seems to know him. I swear. I don't understand why there ain't no persecutor. Prosecutor, Chester. All right. But I asked the judge about that, and he said that there's no need for one. Yes, he knows what he's doing. Yeah. Now, <clears throat> Mr. Buford, we've heard the testimony in detail from Mr. Wolcott. So to uh, speed things up a little, I'll just ask you a few questions. Yes, sir. You were at the stage office when the holdup took place, right? That's right, Your Honor. You, uh, you saw everything Mr. Wolcott saw. Is that right? Yes, sir. The bandit came in, took $10,000 in bills out of the box, then shot and killed, uh, uh, what's his name? Charlie Reynolds, Your Honor. Charlie Reynolds. All right, Mr. Buford. Now, I want you to tell the gentleman and the jury who that bandit was. It was Homer Tisdale, Your Honor. Homer Tisdale. How did you know it was him? Well, he had a mask on, but it didn't really hide nothing. It was him, all right. And besides, it was his voice, plain as day. Ah. Then you uh, knew him before? Sure. Sure. The day we caught him robbing Walcott's store. He's been a thief ever since he come to Dodge. Oh, now, look here. Your, your Honor... You're, you're out of order, Marshal. But, Your Honor, he's giving the jury a wrong impression of this man. Now, believe me. You sit down, Marshal, or I'll hold you in contempt. Your Honor, don't you understand? All right. There. That's better. The jury is competent to judge the evidence, Marshal. All right, Mr. Buford, you may step down. Yes. Uh, we'll, uh, we'll now hear from the defense. Uh, take over, Mr. Ship. Oh, but Marshal, you didn't talk to me, didn't ask me nothing. You, you said you would. Just wait a minute, Homer. We'll see what your defense says mm -hmm. about it. May it please the court and the gentlemen of the jury... You've heard the evidence. I rest my case. What? what? Marshal? That ain't no defense. What does that mean, Marshal? He's sitting down already. Mr. Marshal. He can't do that. All right, silence. Silence in the court. Silence. The jury will retire to consider the evidence. And it'll return with its verdict in, uh, say, a half hour. And it better be the right verdict or I'll hold you all in contempt. Now, get to work. Marshal, I don't understand, Marshal. I, I I thought a man had a right to say something for himself. Yeah, uh, so did I, Homer. I mean, that defense fella, he didn't help none. Where's the judge going now? Outside for a drink, I expect. Well, what? You, you wait here with Chester. Will you talk to him, Marshal? Tell him I didn't do it. I'll be back, I Homer. I didn't do nothing. Oh, <laughs> uh, 
Have a nip, Marshal? No, thank you, Judge. I always like to get the jury out, give a man time for a little refreshment. Ah. <clears throat> That's good corn you make here. <laughs> yeah. You know, Marshal, I'm a drinking man, but I've never been drunk in my life. Never once. Oh, well, that's fine, Judge. Marshal, I'm sorry I had to sit you down so hard in there, but a court's got to be run by one man or it'll get out of hand. I know. I've seen it happen. I've seen some things happen in court, too, Judge. I never saw an accused man not get a chance to defend himself before. Well, you heard the evidence, Marshal. What defense could he make? <laughs> be just a waste of time. I see. I want to get this trial over with. i got to take the train up to Abilene at midnight. That, that doesn't give me much time to see Dodge, does it? <laughs> no, I, I guess it doesn't. In fact, a half hour is too long for that jury. I'm going to call him back now. you excuse me, Marshal. Sure, Judge, sure. Oh, uh, maybe you'll uh, change your mind and have that drink with me after, huh? Yeah, Judge. Maybe. <laughs> He sure didn't give that jury much time, did he, Mr. Dillon? No, he didn't, Justin. Marshal, what do you, what do you think they'll say? They haven't much choice, Homer. Well, gentlemen, have you reached a verdict? We have, Your Honor. Let's hear it. But we find the defendant, Homer Tisdale, guilty. Oh, what is Homer Tisdale? I ain't guilty, Marshal. Stand up. I didn't do nothing. Stand up, Homer. Go on. It ain't fair. Homer Tisdale, you've been found guilty. Where's the money? What did you do with that $10,000? I ain't got it, Judge. I didn't take it. Honest, I didn't I'll... take it. If you won't tell us where you buried that money, I'm going to sentence you. For robbery, you get 20 years in prison. 20 years? But you'll never serve them, Homer Tisdale. You're a double-dyed monster, and your hands are steeped in human blood. Creatures of your like aren't fit to live. Away with you. And for murder, I sentence you to be hanged by the neck until you are dead. Court dismissed. Marshal. Marshal, did you hear him? Did you hear what he said? I, I declare I never seen nothing like this. There might just as well not have been no trial at all. Take Homer to jail, Chester, and keep him there. Well, it ain't right, Mr. Dillon. It just ain't right at all. Do it, Chester. Yes, sir. Oh, where are you going? I'm going to have a drink with Judge Stokes. What? Yeah. We're going to become real good friends. Another drink, Judge? Uh, no, no more, Miss Kitty. I've got to be going. Oh, poor him, one, Kitty. He's got an hour yet before his train leaves. Have you, Judge? Sure. You'll have another, Judge. There you are. You can't sit around a whole hour without a drink. Uh, I told you, I... I... Well, aren't you enjoying yourself, Judge? Oh, it isn't that, uh, Miss Kitty, but... Uh... Well, I, I haven't been alone all day long. Well, it's been my pleasure, Judge. I don't often get a chance to be with a man like you. <laughs> I, I know, I know, but sure. uh, there must be things you have to do. I just don't feel right taking up all your time this way. Oh, don't worry about him, Judge. People don't get really serious about breaking the law around here until after midnight anyway. That's right, Judge. I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll put you on the train, and then I'll get to work. Huh? No, no, I, I don't want anybody to put me on the train. Well, it's less than an hour from now. Uh, Marshal, I insist I go alone. I'm going to leave now. Well, it doesn't take that long to get to the depot, Judge. I want to uh, walk around for the first by myself. I like being alone sometimes. Well, everybody does. Oh, okay, Judge. Sure, I understand. You go on alone if you want. Well, I'm grateful to you, Marshal, for all you've done. Ah. Well, it was a pleasure meeting you, Miss Kitty. Well, goodbye, Judge. Look me up when you come back. Of course. Well, goodbye. <clears throat> goodbye, Marshal. Goodbye, Judge. Goodbye. Let me know when he gets out the door, Kitty. I will. 
I don't know what this is all about, Matt, but I, I hope I did what you wanted. You were a big help. Got pretty tiresome before we came in here. There he goes. You better hurry if you're going to follow him. Yeah, I'm going to pick up Chester first. I think I know where the judge is going. I'll see you later, Kitty. Yeah, sure, Matt. <laughs> Very much drove him crazy, Mr. Dillon. You dogging him around that way. I worried him some, Chester. That's how I knew I must be right. Here we are. We better walk through the side window there and they'll see us. Yeah. Can you see anything, Mr. Dillon? Yeah. They're in there, all right. Judge Stokes is with them. All right, come on. We'll walk right in the front door. You get to one side when we go in, Chester. Yes, sir. Wait. Get in. What are you doing here? I thought you wanted to be alone, Judge. Shoot him. Shoot him, I tell you. He knows. Now, Buford, walk it. Which one of you is going to shoot me? Now, one of you must have a gun somewhere. You shot Charlie Reynolds. No? Then get your hands up while we search you. I got a gun, Marshal. Here. I'll give it to you. Get his gun, Chester. It's still in his pocket. Tell me, Judge, how much money did they give you out of the 10000 I don't know what you're talking about, Marshal, but I'll have you in court for this. Oh, I'll be in court with you and in front of Judge Brooking. You know, you overplayed your hand today, Judge Stokes. You and that bought defense lawyer, and I'll find him before the night's out. You wouldn't dare arrest a judge. Whoever, whoever heard of such a thing? Well, now, I guess maybe a judge is a pretty important man, isn't he? Uh, he certainly is. Yeah. Well? Well, I tell you. Since you are the most important man here, I'm going to give you a cell by yourself. You can have Homer Tisdale's. He won't be needing it anymore. Gun. Produced and directed by Norman McDonald, stars William Conrad as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal. The story was specially written for Gunsmoke by John Meston. Featured in the cast were Lawrence Dobkin, Vic Perrin, Joseph Kearns, and Harry Bartell. Harley Bear is Chester, Howard McNear is Doc, and Georgia Ellis is Kitty. This is George Walsh inviting you to join us again next week for another story on Gunsmoke. Over the CBS Radio Network.